Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Well, I thought we, you know, since we did landscape the last one, we would continue back with some of our rose studies. Now, last time we did that yellow rose, and I showed you how to put on a pattern and, and uh, follow that, uh, you know, for specifically and work it through. It's really great for beginners, for some of you that are learning some of the, the roses. I thought this week what I do is, I'll take you into a little bit of how to create your own design, some color choices that you'd have to make, how I really do it from taking inspiration from flowers to create a painting. Um, and I want you to, you know, those of you that are younger beginners, you can follow that same thing like I showed you in, you know, the, the other one where on the yellow rose, the yellow rose painting, where you can, uh, you know, take your entire got it stuck here to the back here. See if I can get that off. But I uh, guess I can't here. It's on the back. <laughs> the uh, plastic here that uh, I showed you how to take this all off. If you, so if you haven't watched this yellow rose one, you should go over and watch the yellow rose one because I go through, you know, if you're a beginner, especially if you're a beginner, how to get those lines perfect. And that's what you want to do because I break the painting down into three different stages. The color, management of it, the technique you're going to use, and the line drawing. And, you know, when you're a beginner, take away that line drawing one. Transfer that out so you don't have to worry about the, the actual line, the lines of the rows. So you know that you got a good rose. Then you can concentrate on your technique and your color. Well, these are some photos that I bought. I purchased from Adobe Stock Photos. I love using those. And this one, I will probably do this whole rose combination here because I love that. But today, I'm just going to pick out one, probably that one. I love the gaze and the color into that one. And then some of these other smaller flowers, put it together. So it's not too dissimilar from what we did last time, but I'm going to show you how I create it. Okay, and again, you could take the line drawing off of uh, my finished one or off of a, a flower and put it in place and follow the same technique along the line of what we did with the yellow one as well. Okay, first off, our colors that we're going to use here, now there's quite a bit of warmth into the the center of the rose here. And these flowers down here are definitely cool, cool in color. For years I wasn't a temperature painter, and now that I go more quote-unquote into the fine art, I'm very much aware of the temperature of my colors all the time and where we use lights and darks to create and, and edges and stuff to create contrast, temperatures can do it also. But And so if you want your roses to really advance off of a background or something like that, which is what we have to decide first is our background, then you're gonna take temperature, not only color, the hue, but the temperature also into um, into consideration when you're when trying to do that. So I know that my, the majority of my flowers are going to be cool, so I'm probably going to want to create a warmer, a little bit warmer background, okay? So let's still go down and look at the palette. This is the palette that I normally use for everything here that I, and I make few additions every once in a while. The hot, the Hansi Yellow, Darulite Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Naphthal Red Light, Burnt Sienna, uh, Pine Green, uh, Thalo Blue, the red, violet, quinacridone, violet, your cool colors are right here. Red, violet, quinacridone, violet. I put out the, this uh, medium beige. Now, I used that into the landscape the last time. Showed you guys how the beige warms things up, and it's a good mid-tone. This time, I'm going to use it into a floral and show you that. So, it's not a color that I always put out onto my palette, but boy, whenever I'm doing backgrounds and I want to really adjust that background or painting mountains or something like that, and they've got those warmer undertones, I really like to put out the medium beige. It's pre-mixed color, easy to use. I have some titanium white. This is my, uh, the Derivan open medium, which is gonna give us some working time. I also have out my cap of extender medium here, which also slows down the drying time. And we're in the process of filming some videos that we're going to put up here onto the channel that explain all the mediums and how artists use those to create different effects. So I'm, I'm filming those too. We're doing a lot of filming right now, okay? All right. So first, before I go sketching anything in here, because I'm going to sketch it this time. Now, you could transfer your pattern just like I showed you. Don't get, don't get me wrong with that, okay? If you haven't watched that yellow rose one, go watch that yellow rose one on how I work that through, especially if you're a beginner, because you can apply that same start to this, okay? All right. 
So this is a 14 by 18 wood panel that I just gave a coat of white to and then sanded it with 180 grit sandpaper, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a warmer color here. So I'm, and I'm, I'm gonna kind of palette knife mix it, which you don't see me do very often. But um, matter of fact, let's do this a, let's do this a different way. Show you guys how to lay your colors in and, and stuff. That would be kind of fun. That would be kind of fun as well. All right, this is where it gets fun. We're gonna take our sponge. Okay, so we're gonna start out. White's a neutral, okay? So I'm gonna take some medium beige here, and this has a little bit of green in it, and I'm gonna, uh, but it doesn't need to have any green in it. And I'm gonna go through first, just with uh, some of this medium beige, and a little water, just a little water. And I'm gonna pre-tone my canvas here. And yeah, nice. Nice drippy water, <laughs> goodness sake. I have a splash zone around here. So I, I like to, you know guys, this is the whole thing. You know, for years, uh, I was a really a strict constructionalist of a painter and very careful and very edges and everything. I mean, I, that was a cam I was a canvas. We studied stuff like that. So I was always really, really careful. And now if I want to paint casual, I mean, I just, let the stuff fly. You have to let yourself go with a lot of things and have some fun. That's the biggest thing, is have some fun if you want this stuff to turn out casual. So you can see here, this is a, a beautiful warm tone. It's not as green probably as I want. Okay, now why would I want a green? Okay, warmth we've answered. So we've got cooler kind of flowers here, and so we'll put a warm down so that we'll get a nice we'll get a nice difference in temperature so the cool colors will advance and cool colors do advance. But why am I taking kind of a green, a yellow green? Because if I really want to give myself, I can change this, but if I really want to give myself a good start, I will, and you know, I get a lot of questions from people that say, what's the background? How do you choose the background? Start, go to the opposites. The opposites of everything you're working with. Don't go, don't, you know, that gives you contrast, that gives you interest, gives you pop. Go to the opposite. So we have cool flowers, we're gonna to go to a warm background. We have these, basically these red, red violets here. So our background's gonna go green to yellow green. And I'm gonna key this mostly a warmer yellow green because I wanna really use a lot of my violet tones that I have down in here. So I'll use that warmer, uh, warmer uh, yellow green. So once I put that nice warmth on here, let's go a little bit more to a yellow green here, okay? And let's lighten this up as well with some whites and stuff. And we'll go a nice, nice warm. We even add a little bit more of this beige in here. But this is a real soft, warm yellow green here. Now I can brush that on, or I can do like I like to do with this sponge and just incorporate this color even if you're, you're, now you have to have a pretty good acrylic. See, this acrylic doesn't pick up and roll, so it just hue shifts over really nice and mixes up and stuff like that. You see that. So some acrylics, if they start to dry, you might have to let this completely dry because some acrylics have a lot of vinyl in them, and if they start to dry, then it will, um, it will, uh, pick up and roll and tear a hole into the painting on you. So you gotta be careful. Different, all acrylics are different, okay? They're all different. The heritage doesn't do that. The heritage just continues on. So now I have this warm, kind of a yellow green, which I think these flowers will come off of really nice. And I love using this. Uh, this is, I explained to you one of the um, uh, other and I use these sponges a lot in backgrounds and stuff. You can tell here it's my warming sponge. Uh, this is a tile setter sponge. You go get it at the Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or any of your big home store, any home store actually. Go to the tile department. This is a tile setter sponge, what they use to wipe the grout down off of the things. It's a big one and I just cut it up into different things. It only costs a couple bucks, but it does fantastic backgrounds. And you can even do like wood graining and stuff like that. I show that with you. It's me and my sponge. I like that sponge, but it's quick. Okay. All right. So now you can let this dry. If you're, you know, if you're a beginner, let that dry and then, you know, grab your, grab your plastic 
And just like we did with this one, you here, grab your plastic and stuff and transfer a pattern on and you have, you know, you have that line to work with. I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, for years, guys, for years, I transferred the patterns. Of course, that was, you know, many years ago. I've been painting many years. Now I don't need that. But if there's something I really, sometimes, you know, if there's something I really want to capture or really want to, you know, play with the technique a bit, I will transfer a pattern. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can sketch it, but there's nothing wrong with transferring a pattern and making sure that you get that image correct so you can concentrate on color and technique, okay? All right, so... You know, like when we painted the other one and stuff, I do a lot, of, I explained to you, I do a lot of drawing and stuff with filberts, and I do like the filberts. When I want to paint a little more casual, I go to the flat. I like the flats as well, as you can tell by all the paint on the handle. So this is a number eight, and so you can use either one. Sometimes when I'm sketching, I like my little filbert, but either one is fine. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna. I'm going to just lightly. A rose is a circle, and you can see that. There's a circle, okay? Here's a circle. Let's divide this one up into three circles, basically. The outer petals, the middle row of petals, and then the center of the rose, because this rose is open and it's facing towards us. So let's come right in here. Now, let's not get too big, and let's undulate this outside just a bit here. And uh, so we can have some working room here. We'll put that outside line on. We'll put an inside line on here, okay, for those inside petals. Matter of fact, I think I'll make this just a touch bigger Be because I'm an artist. I can do that, right? <laughs> yeah. So let's just, let's make this one a touch bigger so this, uh, this rose will have a little more power. We can undulate that outside. This will be the cool side down here on the rose down here. And so a couple of big petals out here. Then we'll have the other line here of these other ones. So we'll have basically right now what I really will concentrate on is where my center is and the outside size of the rose. Now, let's uh, add a couple of other little things here. One of the things I do put in pretty quickly is, is a stem line because that gives me my movement my energy through my painting, and I do like to add stem lines and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll take a look at that. This is just with uh, some burnt sienna here. Okay, now I do like that kind of turned back one that's back here. Maybe I'll bring him out a little bit more. And a turned back one is more of a triangle shape. Do you see that? Okay, so I want to do a triangle kind of shape right there to capture this turned one right there. And then now I'm going to fill up with some of my other flowers. Maybe I'll put one of those flowers right down here. And don't make them, make these what I call, and, and I do this and I do this in a lot of design classes, I call it the descending circles, descending size. And you get most interest in everything within a painting if you descend the size. In other words, smaller, smaller, smaller of your circles. So this rose here, which is going to be my primary rose, is my largest circle. This one here, which turns sideways, is going to be my what I call my number two circle, number two in power. And then this is the third one. So as I come into here and maybe add a few more little little flowers, maybe I'll add a few and some trailing down and stuff like that down there they will be smaller so basically I have three different sizes of flowers in this composition and that that meets a, a lot of a lot of older rules that I read from floral painters from the 19th century and stuff that especially the botanical painters that say you paint the three stages of the rose the adult the juvenile and the bud so you have at least three sizes within a composition and that works there's a lot to that but my point here is, okay, to those of you that are, are younger painters, learning painters, there is so much sometimes coming at you and you feel like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Or I can't learn this. Yeah, you can. There are rules. There are rules and you can look to the old masters and the other teachers to help you with rules, but there are rules for everything. Now, not everyone states the rules, but there are rules, if you're like me, a left brain logical 
you know, analytical uh, painter. We can learn rules and we can learn how to draw and create beautiful paintings by following the rules. So they are there, okay? It doesn't always just require, okay, just paint what you feel, okay? There are rules that can help you, okay? All right. Now, so I have a basic calligraphy here, basic idea where I'm going to go. Lots of negative space out here that I can, the negative spaces, areas without design that I can work with. I'm going to go to my flat. And just like the last one, what I'm going to do is pick out some really, uh, some really intense colors in here towards the center. I'm going to grab my Darulite yellow, a touch of that naphthol red light, which is this real orange kind of warmth that I want to grab right here into the center of my design. Now, if you have transferred your your line, your pattern, basically of the rose, what you want to do is just like I did with the yellow one. Okay, you want to uh, put this on a little bit transparent. You don't need any mediums or anything like that into it because we're gonna, you know, we're going to let this kind of tack up a bit as we add some of the other colors and stuff. And I do like this. I do like to put the colors in kind of unblended so that I get some nice modeling and stuff here. So I don't like to work the colors too much. I want some of this modeling around because that's movement. See, that's all this beautiful movement within the flower, okay? Okay, now let's add a bit of this down here towards the base of this one. And sometimes to create harmony, especially in my flowers, I'll look to the other flowers. Now these flowers that I have, one good thing about it, you see there in the center, they have this yellows to whites and stuff there into the center. Now I have that color working through that composition. Okay, and many times you see me in real like casual ones, I'll take that color and I'll add that in little bits and stuff to the background, what I call little color marks of it, uh, little sparks of the color, I'll add that out to backgrounds areas and stuff like that. And you know, what determines whether or not uh, I do that? It's your technique, it's your look. Are you developing, you know, what do you like to do? If I do that and then I can't ever sell that painting, then I realize I don't need to do that anymore, <laughs> you know. That's what I do though. I paint, you know, I paint on average three to 400 paintings a year. Most of them are smaller ones that are just samples of looks that, you know, I might turn into bigger studio paintings, okay? Learning, colors, we learn. Now, let's come back out here. Now, here's the cool side. Here's the cool side of our rose. Let's start back down there. And you, you would use your value scale, you would hold it up there and you'd see that that's right around a value five or so. Cool, that's a, so it's way down here towards the cool. And so, and I wanna get those violets in there. And maybe a little, I love, green is in our background. So green and the violets are complements and we can use that green to gray this down. See how that grays that down. Right away so we use this pine green which is a warm green to gray down this color and then we'll add some of our white here to lighten this up find the gray level that you like so we don't want very intense color and I want to keep it right around a five or so which is pretty close to that right there okay and so I'm gonna come right over here and yeah that's good contrast that's a Good contrast. Now, I don't want to develop any edges and I want this to really kind of fade away. So I'm just going to push the color around a little bit. Sometimes when I'm starting out like this, I'll take some extender and thin it out in my brush and I'll run these two kind of together like this, run them and cross them together like that. So I get this warm, cool kind of crossing area right in through here. Okay. Now this is just your first color setup. This isn't a beautiful rose, okay, uh, <laughs> by far. Okay, we've got a lot to do with it, but I'm putting on what I call a step process, a layering process, so I can help myself see the color. So that's our cool color. So let's take a bit of this cool color right up here, and let's add that right up maybe to the edges of this one. Now light's gonna be coming down this way, so the cool color, Dave, won't really go right up quite that high, but that's okay. And we'll push some of that 
right down in here onto this being especially there's a shadow that's right down here but this shadow though is cast by the uh, other flower the other rose so if you're only going to paint one you got to look at really got to look at where that shadow is coming from all right so there's some of the cool now there's a little bit more of the cool which i love right in here which you see right in there which is going to be that second from the second layer of petals right in there and look at that doesn't that look magnificent that warm and cool there that cool color just running right there into that warm that this looks really pretty now so we have that now i also see that i could have a little brighter a little brighter orange or red so i'll change it i don't always paint with the same color over again so i was using darty light i'll reach over and grab a little hansa so i change things i don't always paint too long with the same color so i'll put a little bit of that red maybe even a little bit more red red right into here that'll be pretty just kind of just kind of take the colors, what we say, the color marks. Just make some color, or you'll hear a lot of artists talk about the notes. Just put in that, just record that note. That means just put a little bit of that color in there so that your eye can start to see that color and start relating other things to it, okay? We call, you know, you create the note, okay? Now, let's just take some of this, a matter of fact, most of this, let's put a little extender with this, just kind of model some of this together, some of these greens, all this together. This makes a lovely, wonderful, looks like I know what I'm doing, neutral for making white, lighter petals. So this is a nice gray. And you can see it's a real nice gray to go into that rose. Now, if I want it more pink, I can slide it over here just a touch more red and then lighten it up a bit and it becomes more pink. Or I can have it more orange or I can have it more violet and stuff. I'm gonna leave it right about here, right in here. And I'll maybe sometimes pick up some yellow and some orange and stuff. And let's come out here and see how some of the color, different colors come off my brush. I love that when that happens. That's why I try not to mix too long on the palette because I like colors to come off. Now, if you've transferred your pattern, of course, you're following everything, right? I'm not, I'm just kind of creating the flower. And, and I won't, I won't go into a complete copy mode because I don't want to do that because that'll start making me stiff. I know that about myself. I'll start to become stiff. But I'm going to concentrate first on my outside petals so I can kind of complete my ring of, of petals here. All right. And then I'll, I'll start moving to the inside. Now back here, let's just even add a little bit of the open medium here. Back here, I'm just going to, and I'm going to do this really soft, put in some of this color. Let's, that open medium is a little bit thick. I like to start out kind of thin. I'm a thin, thick painter. So this extender is a great way for me to start out. I just want to get some of those colors on. Now, what I like to do, especially if it's a back one, I'll recede it into the background. I'll push some of the textures out, some of the lights out. And, and so I just get some of those colors in there. And that's what I'm looking for right now is just some of those colors. And I might even take some of these yellow darty lights, some of this red here, some variations of this, and work this out. Let's get a little more Hansa right in there too. I like that powerful Hansa. Work those colors right out. See how pretty those are to warm, slightly cooler, working together there. You get these beautiful colors. Now, here's the other thing. I would rather you, if you're a beginner, I would, and I recommend this all the time, okay? I would rather you go through and really start to work on these colors where you get some bright ones and some of these different marks and all that kind of stuff. And if you lose your pattern, you lose your pattern because you can let this dry, come back and put your pattern right back on, on top of this and then come in and draw the flowers, okay? It's much better that you concentrate on that color and stuff. And if you lose it, that's okay. Now let's take some of the cooler versions of this. So we'll grab some more of the red violet a little bit of that green will tone it, remember? And then we'll take some of the light here, up about a value five or so, 
And let's just put some of these cooler versions in here for some smaller flowers. We'll vary the tone, vary the color a little bit, maybe a touch brighter uh, right up here onto like this one right here. That will be a pretty color. Look at those colors working together again. This nice, beautiful, cool color here. Let's drop some of that out here. Now I'm going to get very impressionistic. This is where I like to paint. And I just go like that. I just, I create like X's and movements and stuff. So I'll shape this one up a bit here. A little bit of those petals. And I don't have to, I noticed that these petals are really kind of two shapes into a heart. I kind of like that, but um, I'm not going to, I'm going to paint a little more casual than that. I'm just using these for colors and ideas, okay? But I'm going to paint a little more casual than that. I love those those colors. That's different. It's very different, you know, and this would be a good one for you to, you know, see how many people like it and stuff. Now, I'll take some of those colors, though, and I'm going to push them into my rose. Now, watch what happens. See, that color goes in and pushes into my rose here, and I create a better harmony. I get these flowers that go together better. And so you, you can see those that color, that violet. So now that we have the yellows moving through, we now have the red, vi the quinacridone violet moving through, and we get a prettier harmony. And step back. Those of you that watch me all the time, you know that's camera one. It's at eight feet. And that's where I like to, to paint with. So I have monitors right here I can look at. When I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at the monitor. It shows me what the painting looks like at eight feet. If you don't have that, step back step back. You should always step back and look at your painting. Okay. Now, before I go into anything different, let's just, let's take a little bit of our green burnt sienna here and let's just, uh, let's just draw in a little bit more of our stems here, a little bit more careful with some of that stem movement and stuff that we want here. Movement. See, this just creates movement through the painting that I want to have. And let's go more green here and push in some some contrasting green here. And I just want to, just so I see it, now that might be a little too, maybe a little bit more yellow green. That's better. Now why, now how do I know that that's better? It's, it's you know, if you put a color on and go, <gasps> That's telling you, that's your inside artist telling you, you just made a mistake, okay? <laughs> so you should put it on and you should get this feeling of, wow, that's kind of neat. If you don't get that, change it up a little bit. Now here, the color was really a little, the green was, even though pine green's a yellow green, it was a little too blue for what I'm doing. So I just green it, yellow green it up a little bit more and it creates a better harmony here with my background. So your background, guys, your background controls everything about your painting. And so as artists, we key, we say the, back, the background sets the key of the painting. And it really does. So here I'll just push a, a little bit there. We'll push a few here. A few of these right into here. Just a bit of that. And so we'll see that. Now you step back and you go, okay, yeah, that's kind of pretty. Now, so you can, you can, you know, dry this and set your pattern. Or you can do like I'm going to do now. And I'm going to come in and start to paint this, you know, start to paint this. Now, sometimes I'll just move some of this stuff out of the way. One reason why I like painting on glass is I just take my little razor scraper here and I'll just take some of it off. And I can work again right back in here. Now, we're going to create some warmth. So let's go back to our yellows. And I constantly mix, guys. I constantly mix and change my, my flowers up a bit. Let's come back in. And right into here, you see a large petal. That petal is kind of important. It sets the center and the shape of the row. So usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll find that. That helps me find the bowl of what that row, where that rose is. And I kind of draw it. And, you know, like I did with... Um, well, what I did with the the other lesson, the yellow rose, was I would draw that in with the filbert and then fill it in. And here you see me just kind of smashing it in 
and extending it and working it. I, but I'm watching these edges. I want that powerful edge there that draws that center bowl there, okay? And that kind of sets my foundation. Now, let's come over here. Let's say I even add a little bit of our beige in here, okay? Just a bit of the beige. And let's just push in and twirl down a few rose petals there. I like to, even if this is dry, this the heritage pushes really nice, and I don't destroy all of what I did before. I can push in some, some interest there. And, you know, the last one I did was very smooth. This one I'm going to leave brush marks, what we call the calligraphy of the painting here. That's this brush mark. So you see me kind of twisting and moving my brush. That's the calligraphy of it. I'm going to push this petal up and in just a bit more. So I'll just push a bit of that in like that, okay? Closing that up a bit, okay? As I go to the outside, now you can go do this with, the, if you really like the painting with that filbert, you can use that filbert, you know, we did on the last one. But uh, I'll read, there's a couple of petals here that I can start before I get to those big ones to the outside here. I can put a couple of petals in and I just reach over onto the edge of the brush and let a little bit of that paint come off onto the edge and then soften it. Push through and soften it. I'm an edge painter so sometimes I'll soften down here and leave that edge. The more I soften right here, which you can't really see, but uh, the more I soften it, the more that edge now comes off. Do you see? So if I push in something really hard, it, see how it softens? Because it's working the colors together, kind of uh, modeling and blending them together here, and so that's softening it out here. But if I'm painting really casual, I like to have those edges show up here, and brush marks and stuff like that show up. Okay, so there's all kinds of ways to do it. Now, let's go, let's head just a touch cool so we'll pick up a touch of our quinacridone right over here into this and the light here. And I want to stay right around a seven or an eight. I don't want to get too light. And I'm going to start some of the second row of petals over here onto this side. And I'll pull right down into the bowl. See, I'll slide right onto that chisel. Just like I showed you in the last one in drawing it. And then I'll push these to kind of incorporate them together just a bit. And I'll leave that. So what I'm seeing is this petal coming off right here, and I'm putting it right there. If you've transferred your pa pattern, you'll just follow right along that, that petal, and then you'll push it down. You can even come back with a, you see some of that red in there, deeper red, like a red, red violet. And you can push in a little bit of that color if you like that color into that rose, just push that in right in there. And that's a pretty color like that, see? Makes it look like you know what you're doing. The thing is, guys, when you're doing this and you're learning, and um, I speak from a lot of experience, it's easy to get frustrated. It's easy to look at this and you say, wow, look at how easy he did that. That's because I've done 17,000 roses, okay? All different kinds of ways. Okay, so it looks easy when I'm doing it, but when you start it, it's not easy. It takes practice, but you can do it. Everybody, you can do it. It's, you know, it, it, this is this is techniques that can be learned. Watch and draw with your brush. Now you could use a smaller brush. You could draw here. I'm not. I'm going to bypass that little fold in there for right now. I can add it later if I want, but it's too much to try to do the first time through. But I'll just come right around here like that and push that in now. I do like to push, but let me show you, because there's different ways. I can pinch wipe that color off of my brush. With acrylics, your solvent is water. And if I just touch into a little bit of water, I'll show you this. Touch into a little water, and I'll look in here. No, it's not really that red, so I'm just going to use a little bit of the, the water here right onto the edge. And I'm going to push that water right into the pink that I already have there, just like that. And if you have a really good acrylic, you'll see it melts together. Do you see that? It makes it look just like you blended it. That's another type of technique. So you don't, it doesn't need to, that, this red that's underneath there is already dry. But with certain acrylics, like Heritage, that dry 
will still maintain or its ability to be lifted with a solvent for a couple hours. So you can do this technique for a couple hours of just coming around and, and drawing the pedal and then using some water to soften it in. Now let's reach up. So we have that one there. We have a smaller one right out here towards the point. Let's just kind of push that in. There's a little pink there. So let's go, let's put a little bit of pink. Now see with the pink, you can even use a technique like this and just pull down. The thing is when I'm painting, when I'm painting a lot of really detailed uh, roses and stuff, I will use several techniques onto the rose to make each of the little petals and stuff look a little different. Now I'm going to put a little light there so that you see that light traveling down the rose here like that. So I'll push that right there. Okay, that that kind of worked out there. And I think I'll take a little bit of that light pink. We'll add a little open medium. Open medium, if you want your colors to stay wet, you can just add that open medium. I'm going to push a little bit of that light pink out onto the edge. I see a bit of it out onto that one, and I kind of like that coming down around the rose. So if I use that edge, see how I have that real heavy on the edge? And I roll the brush over onto that edge, I can I can draw with it, and I can pull in to soften it, but I can I can do a little bit of drawing with it there. Now that was sticking your finger in white and taking that out. So I'll just lift that right right there with that uh, little bit of water. A little solvent is your your main thing there. Now let's just put a bit of our pink and a little bit of the light kind of colors right down here. We have a little bit of just movement here. Not really sure what it all is in there. So I'm just going to toss some color in there with some brush calligraphy and just create some movement. Maybe a corner of the brush with a little more light to just create a, a bit of movement in there. And sometimes I'll just push it around a bit and I'll just leave it because it's not really all that necessary. Now, I do see I want a bit more orange right up here. So I'm, you can come back and add some of that add some of those colors and tones into your rose there. I like that. Maybe a bit of the lighter pink right across there, like another little petal. I do like that. I do like some of this pink and this orange crossing. So I'm going to even lift a little bit more light right in here. But that's your call. That's, that's your call. What do you want to do is that you can see, though as I'm building this, I can change this change the look of it quite a bit here as I'm painting this. So I'll drop that in. Let's just leave that for right now and then we'll come back to it. Let's go. I, I like the open medium when I want to do a lot of drawing with that's a little thicker. So I'm going to use some light colors here, a little open medium, and I'm going to start the lighter petal here and then I'll reach over and draw onto the edge right here like that. Now I have a choice of either blending down with water or another color or just pushing it. And a lot of times I like to just push the rose because you see that movement that it leaves. And if it's too much, I'll come back with just a little more color and soften that out. I like that. I lose a bit of that other petal, so I just pick up that white onto the edge and I can pop that right back in there like that again. So that petal comes up in front. Now, we're going to go from this color to this cool color. So I'll thin this a bit into my brush. Maybe even add a bit of the tone here. So I'll come in just, it could come in a bit lighter. And so we'll try that a bit lighter so that you see the light coming across. Then I'm going to lift the pressure here and just kind of stop there and let it drag for a second. I'll pinch wipe my brush, and I have a bunch of different techniques. You've seen me on different roses. I can use half tones, which is a tone between the shadow and the light or anything. But like I showed you today, I can just take some water right here and just push and soften that and still get some of this nice, lovely movement and some of that undertone right there that I like there and leave that right there into the rose, okay? And that one has a, a touch of light out there by the edge, so 
we could draw just a touch more here. That's up to you here. Then we'll come down to this other side. Now this other side is cooler again. So I'm going to get some of that nice red violet, some of the green. I'm going to mix the color again and it'll be a little bit different this time and that's okay. Let's just get some of that color out here. Some of this nice cool greens and violets coming off of there. That works out pretty nice. Let's see if we can get some of this tone to carry right in there because I don't like to stop a tone at a petal. So I like to kind of carry it through. So I'll take just a bit of my yellows, my oranges that I was using, and I'll just touch them right over here to the edge of this. And I'll work that color in here just a touch. Now you see that color kind of carrying through, doesn't it? And that's what makes that harmony and that traveling of your color is what makes your rose pretty, okay? So don't just stop a color at a petal. Even if you see that color kind of stopping at that rose, you, you know, the petal, you may want to carry it, but I want you to look real close. Can you see it? Can you see it right in there? That's that color that I'm working with right in there. And of course, it's down lower down over here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to rotate that up. But I carried that color. What I mean is I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put a just a touch more cooler color down here and create a, a little bit more contrast right in here, I think. I like the I like warm cool contrast and I got some beautiful warms up there. So I'm going to carry some cool contrast right up here that's going to pop the rose right in that area here. Now, this is something that you know from time from working with colors and and trying different things and painting 3 or 400 roses a year of just nothing but trying things. It's warm against cool though. Just like we're we're warm, you know, we're warm right here against cool, and we're cool against the warm. It's very warm right in here where I put those colors. So if I put a cool color, especially a darker one, so I get some value contrast there too, I get a pretty uh, a nice area of the rose that has a lot of contrast. Now, let's take some of that cool color, do a little bit more because we can use that to help identify maybe another petal right up in here. Put that nice warm cool contrast right up there and that looks pretty good. Let's take some of that. Let's lighten this up. Tone it down either if you want to keep it warm with a little bit of medium beige, a little bit of green. Okay, let's drop this other outside light petal right in here and let it pull right in towards those cools. Sometimes I'll just do this and that's enough, especially on an outside petal. That's enough, you know, for the for the rose for me. Um, if I want to um, come in here, let's get a little bit grayer, violet and gray. Put a light little bit of that cool color right out there. Maybe uh, just a bit of that right out here. See, I'm just putting it on the edge and pushing those colors of those tones together there. Now I can get this next row, which is warmer. So I'll go back up here, grab my yellows and my reds right up here. Warmer tones, maybe a bit more to the pink side here. Nice warm pink. Let's try something here. It's going to have to go lighter, but let's try this. We'll push that petal right here, kind of pull in here right in there like that. That's kind of pretty. And uh, pick up just a little bit more. Change the color a bit so the petals aren't the same. And pull one out right here. And just kind of let that go right in there to that one there. And that's kind of a pretty, it's a, a little bit strange right there. So maybe I'll take some of that warmth and just hit an edge right out there. Just to tie that together. And remember we can travel colors. So and travel just a bit of that pink out that way. I do kind of like it though. Could be a bit lighter, so I'll lighten it up. Concentrate most on that outside edge, and then you can pull in, pull in like this is the base of the rose. Pull in right towards that base, right like that. Maybe a bit more here, or you can pull out. You'll see me pull out sometimes. Keeps edges of petals soft and stuff. Sometimes I'll pull out. It makes a nice pretty little 
edge there. So it's not copying that rose, but it's catching some of the feeling of that rose. And that's what I like to do in casual painting is I don't copy it by any manner of means, but I try to capture some of the what that the feeling of that particular rose or that particular shape that I'm trying to do. I'm going to lighten this up just a bit more, push the light a little bit more on this side of the rose here. So you'll see that coming up and uh, let's just model a little more color, a little more light, a few little light strokes out here. Find the bowl. You'll see me in all my rose videos always say find where that that bowl opening of the rose is. You need to keep that in mind where that is. Now let's just draw another little petal coming in like there. And that's fine. Let's put a little bit of that light. See, just a tiny little corner of it. Let's just touch a bit of that right down into there. Now, on this one, there's a, a petal that comes across and is folded over. I might just emulate that just by pulling a petal across like this. And then what I'll do is take some of this cooler kind of color, lift off that little bit of texture there this cooler color and just pull down into the round shape of the rose here like that. The big thing is your center always has to round. It has to round, has to round. Now I lost that little bit of red because I overpainted a bit, but I lost that little bit of red that I liked in there. And this is where you can just come back and just add little touches of it. Especially if your painting is really casual like I like to do. You can just come back and add to it. Add some of it to some of these colors and stuff. And let's just add a little more movement here. A little bit more going on in this rose here. And I can define. Of course, if you're following, you know, you'd have a pattern. You can define more clearly some of those out those smaller you know little petals and more pink if you want here I'm going a little bit more light but you can you have your you can uh, follow them a little closer here I like to touch and push that gives me all kinds of uh, variations and I think now there isn't one on this other one here but I think I will take a cooler, kind of a light between all of those. And I'm going to add one more little petal right in here. This is where I sometimes read the road. Nature's wonderful, you know, for a lot of things. But sometimes, you know, I'm really a left brain painter. And I like to see things even. So it uh, sometimes I like to add petals that aren't really there. And that's okay. That's okay. It's just part of, you know, my technique of the way I like to do things. So, here we go. Now, I just cut that right there. See, that's just all one big old long straight line there. That's my left brain. I always, you know, I put it on and then I always go through like this little uh, checklist of what did I just do. And I saw I did that. I found that over the years that that helps me a lot. Let's... So I'm just coming through right now and just slowly lightening some things about my flower that uh, I want to, uh, you know, add a little bit more interest, a little more things into it and stuff. And then we can start adding more colors. Now, this 8 is a really big brush to do that. You can even go down to like a small um, filbert here and we could take some of our or yellows, oranges, some of these pretty colors, and you can work them right back up in here with some smaller brushes to get some of these other tones back up inside here. And it's okay to use a different brush. I like to use a different brush because it's gonna cause you to use it just a bit differently here. But I can work in some deeper shadows here. Nice, this nice warm goes against that cool really nice. There, some nice shadowy colors in there. That's kind of pretty. Maybe a bit more of the violets right down in here. Here, and I 
like all of that little color movement. See, I want to get that nice coloring and stuff right down in here by the centers. And uh, so I try not to blend too much. I try to just push the colors to get their movements to move. So I want this movement, this rounding movement through here. So my brush is constantly kind of rounding up in through here as I'm pulling some of this and working some of these colors here like that. Okay, and let's uh, get some of that maybe right back out in here a little deeper. So even after you get some of the main colors and stuff onto your rows here, let's come back with some yellows right into there. Just push those colors in there. See, they don't have to blend or anything like that. They can just put the movement. Now we can create petals with just a little bit of light. Here, the look of some petals here coming through a little bit of light. So once I've built kind of the structure of the rows, you know, that I built in there, then I can come back, add a little more color, push around a little light color to create the look of extra little petals and little stuff going on, you know, inside the rows here, little, always working in a round shape, everything around, around, around here. And so I'll drop some of this in here, push some of that. What's most important is that you just get this rounding uh, movement here, that this rounding kind of movement to the, the center there. That's the most important. There's a set of little petals. I'm just going to add a little rounding movement right there to that petal there, here. And here's the other thing too. Sometimes, and this is very true, sometimes when you're building the roses, it's all gonna get, get off and start looking wrong. Because I'm kind of doing something here that I, I, I don't allow my beginners to really do, is I'm painting a lot on this rose without putting that color anywhere else. And what happens is it's called color perspective. You start putting on a lot of color, it can start looking wrong. It may not be wrong. Everything you're doing may be absolutely correct but it starts to look wrong because it's the most painted thing in your painting, okay? So I'm kinda, it's kinda good to go on to some of the other stuff and I'm gonna do that. I'm just having some fun here and just, I should move on and I will, just one more stroke, <laughs> do that. But keep that in mind, that if something's going wrong, it may not be wrong and it most likely is not wrong. It's just called, what's what we call color perspective. Now, I'm gonna put that brush down a minute Let's go back up here to the top. Let's take some of this light, some of these light colors, and we're gonna quickly paint this one because this is what I call the color carrier. Its job is to just move these tones back up there. Its job is not to be a beautiful flower. We're just gonna carry some of these orangey tones right up there. A bit of these violety tones and red tones right up there. Its job is to just move those tones up there for this other this other rose here, okay? And we'll so we'll take a bit of the light, bit of the pinks here. Let's put a bit of that pink out there. Now I like a bit of the open medium sometimes, or really if I want it to be you know really thin and into the back, I like the extender. The extender keeps it thin. And the extender allows me to push right up and, and create those really uh, transparent edges, which causes the rose to recede. Okay, now let's just build up a bit of center color. And we're not gonna do a whole bunch of shape here. We're just gonna kinda paint the, tri the, the triangle shape here of it almost like a little center there. You can copy the petals and follow them and copy them, or do what I do is just kind of create, you want the bowl, so this would be the bowl right here, so the bowl there, and then you want the outside petals. So here would be an outside petal here. We can pull this down like this 
I like to do this, which smears it out and makes it more transparent right there onto the edge. Let's build, now this one has an angle like coming out front towards you right there. And you can leave that on there. That's fine. We could also pull another angled one down this way here. I like that kind of twisting and turning of that center there. A little more light. Draw right on the edge. You use that light, just like I showed you on the yellow one, you can use that light to draw a rose, see? And you don't need a whole bunch of light dark contrast on this one because it's in the back. But you could just use that light like that and just kind of push that rose around into the shape. Now, I put that on there thinking, oh, I like that and I don't care for it too much. So I'm just going to back that out here with a little more color. And I, I love the push. I love the movement that I get from the push. Now, let's uh, do a little bit of color again into that. I like this, this kind of look, too. See, I'll leave that. And see, if I get something like that that I put on a little too heavy, but I like it, I'll put the warm here onto the other side. And so now I got this warm, cool contrast going through the rows there. And it's just a real pretty color, see? And uh, I like that. We can put a bit of that edge out here. So, you know, I'll, I'll work through and then I'll come back in and I'll say, and sometimes that'll help you see what might be off on your center rows and having a bit more color and texture right there is a good thing on this one. Maybe a good thing right here. Right there. Now, here's the thing. If I put the light here and pull down, that closes the rows. If I put the light which I'm just changing right now, to the outside, you can see what happens. See how it starts to open up that center of that rose. So then I can take some of my Darulide and some of these pretty colors here and swirl them down inside here. And this will start to open up that rose a little bit more. Some of that working of color there. And I might, even though it's closing up right there on that one, I might just paint through this petal again and push it. See, you can change it, guys. Don't ever think, oh, my rose is, you know, there's something wrong with my rose. Not until you get a lot of stuff going, you know, you, you've got to, and I know this sounds absolutely nutty, and I'm a nutty painter sometimes. you got to let your rose talk to you. you gotta, you got to let it, it's got to kind of grow and, you know, find its own inside your painting here. And sometimes that takes a bit of the of the uh, movement and stuff around. So, yeah, so here I'm eliminating that panel there, opening up the rows a little bit more. And I kind of like that a little bit better. Please tell me in the comments down there that you like it too. <laughs> I'm very sensitive. Okay. But you got to have fun with it. This is fun. And, you know, you make mistakes along the way. Well, we do every single time. But I love, I love the frustration. I live for the frustration and the mistakes and stuff because it gives me the opportunity to work through it and figure it out. And I like that. Now I'm just going to take a light edge of some of that, this light color right here, and push that, maybe another little petal spinning down right there like that. So you definitely get the feeling of the opening of the center of the rose here. We'll just add a couple of little smaller little touches, movement. More so than petals, you're painting movement in through here. And it's the movement that this makes your rose pretty. And then I'll go ahead and close this one back down on this side again. Here, because I did like that one, kind of closed over there. Falling down on that side and closing down. That's kind of pretty. Kind of different, kind of pretty. So it's similar to the other one that I use, but that's what I do, right? That's what I do. I don't, I, like I tell you in all my videos, I don't copy. 
I don't like to copy because copying gets frustrating. Unless you're a beginner, put on that pattern and follow those things. But what I do is I'll start to do that, but then I'll start to draw out. And this will happen to you as you get more and more experience. You'll start to draw out and do other things. And you've got to let that happen. Okay. So let's come out. So I got that. That looks, that looks pretty much okay. Uh, maybe a lighter yellow brighter light right up here into the very front to kind of man that's going to be a good pedal little kind of close off the front here just a bit here right like that push that in there like that that's kind of pretty maybe it's a little high don't want to close up too much of the front of that rose so that'll kind of work but you can you know what what really gets it is like you'll have uh and you smaller brush would be easier, but little turned petals and little edges like that. So you would come back and add little edges. We'll do that in more advanced stuff. And there's a lot more stuff to learn. Um, but uh, little edges and stuff can really control your rows. Let's go back and uh, let's take some of these yellows, some of these pinks, I mean the whites and lights, and add a bit more. We're going to do these really fast really casual push the light around we're going to push lights and yellows and do what we call blur them together so we'll push some of the yellows there's a little green in there too by mistake but i like it a little happy accident stuff we'll push some of these lights around okay then we'll put then you can see they have little light tips to them so let's come out here now. I'm not going to make them perfect at all because, see, if I start to make stuff too perfect, it's going to compete and pull from the rows. So you got to be careful here. You don't, and these are called edges, developing edges. So I don't want to develop too many edges. I want to leave it soft on these guys. Here, you can see the edges here. I always kind of pull towards my rows with my edges here. Okay. So they're edges. And one of the things you really want to study as, you, as you're as you learning this stuff is edges. The difference between the soft edge and the defined edge. What we call the hard edge. The lost edge. The found edge. All different artists will call it all different kinds of things. Let's take a little bit of our violets. Maybe a little burnt sienna because I love that color. And we'll toss a bit of that just with the corner of the brush pushing around into the centers of those little flowers. So you can see what the little flower kind of looks like and we're just we're just capturing the look we're not copying it we're just capturing the look here now i'm going to take some darker and more intense of these violets and drop that right around the here painting into that edge of that white just a bit but drop that right around right where the flower is the rose these will help so if I put it out here, see, this is the wrong thing. Don't do this, okay? But I put it out here, my eye jumps out there, see? It's wrong. If, now watch, if I want this rose to be my center of interest, I'll put this here on this side and let this play up against, the, let this movement and stuff here play up against that rose, see? And I'll leave this harder edge right here and I'll soften this edge back down here so that your eye sees the edge of that little flower right out there. Okay, and so this flower now kind of points up and takes you up there towards that, that rose. Okay, now I'll push a few other little hard edges, maybe a hard edge right here, right onto this one. We'll push in that in and out there. There we go. Leave just a bit of an edge right there onto that one. Okay. You can uh, go down for more detail to a smaller brush, but, you know, I'm a big advocate of, like I've, I've said to you many times, sergeant and stuff, and you paint with as large a brush as you possibly can so that you have to turn it and twist it and, you know, do other different little things with it, and that's where you get a lot of interest from. So, big fan of the sergeant for, for doing that. Now, I thin this paint out a bit so it's it gets a little bit more sketchy. So I thinned it out with some extender here. You can we can now also add 
because you see these beautiful lights here and they're a little bit warmer so they could have just a touch of red into that red violet here but you could have a few warmths which is kind of pretty so it's not all so just a bit of that warm oh, dogs are up they a little bit of warmth here now, I'm not going to do all those little petals I'm just going to let these sit out here as these flowers I think this time and because when I look at blurred ones you don't see the definition of the the petals and I want these out here here's a little open medium I want these out here to be blurred to be so their edges are soft I don't want to do hard edges to these at all we could formulate a little bit of that one here but really it, some of the softer darks would do it too but play those colors around like that I'm looking at colors and uh, you know shapes and edges more than anything else and I'm just kind of casually coming through and pushing in some of those pretty colors there yeah and a little bit of uh, Hansa and Darya light yellow there uh, you can tap a bit into the centers to get a little bit more going on here and if that doesn't show up toss a little bit of your violets in there there like that okay I like the real soft I'm going to take some of this pinks here and just kind of dribble those down here a bit I like some of the soft and I'll even thin this out with some water and I'll look to some back composition areas that I might just add a little bit of that color maybe just a touch of the gray so I'll put a little green in it because you don't want it bright a little bit of these other colors here you know to suggest maybe there's a back one turned over here on the other side of that one there and because it just adds so much so a little bit of that gray color right back here like that a little turned one we can go back to our green or yellow green a lot of yellow and you can even cool it gray it with a bit of the violet color here and you can use that in real back areas here soft colors to expand your composition if that's what you want to do expand the composition out add some additional colors here moving through I like to do you know that I like the soft colors as well coming in out here like this and to pull some colors out you know I like to do that now you know we use and, and look at these and this is what I just love about the, the impressionism of painting as well is see these spark that remember I just sparked that original Darulite and I can see that up there and I do like that little spark of that Darulite and stuff running through that some of those areas that's the, the where I am today as a painter some of the the impressionism that I really do like to come through and see some of that and you could do that with some pink too just work some of that pink together like that too see that's kind of pretty we're in color you know that's that's half of what we do you know a lot of people concentrate on the shapes make sure to get the the you know the shapes and everything like that correct and a lot of times guys I'm working on color I do everything on color now if you want to come in we can go to our uh, smaller little filbert here and we can put some of this dirty white grays some of these model colors right up here and you can paint a little more careful into some I wouldn't do the whole thing and, and watch what happens let's take a bit of that Dari light and just slide a bit of that right out over there look at how it just gives a nice little yellow maybe a bit of that yellow oxide maybe a touch of that this is just extra color doing more things 
just gives a little bit more nature to your or painting, you know, a structure to your painting. Let's put up just a bit more structure. And we won't do it everywhere. Let's just do it right here, right like that. And see, that's just kind of pretty there. Now, let's take a little bit of the Darulite. So we don't paint, you don't need to paint the whole thing. That's Impressionism. You know, you don't need to paint the whole thing. You catch, you know, here's our flower. You catch the feeling that those are the same type of flowers, but you don't need to paint every single part like we do with the other. That's why I love to paint like this. I mean, I do all different kinds of things, guys. I, 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 you know, don't make it seem like this is the only way I paint. I paint a lot of realism, but I, this is my favorite way. <laughs> to me, this is the most fun way to paint because you just kind of let yourself go. You know, you just let yourself go and you have a bit of fun with it and you know, you just got to remember to stop. Not all of it needs perfect shapes at all. You just got to stop sometimes. And uh, you can have a bit of fun with some of that. Now, let's go back to our... Um, so I use that little fill work just to clean up little edges. But be very careful because, see, that edge pulls away from that rose. So you want to make sure that your rose has a nice edge. Now, you can, you know... And those of you that follow your pattern and stuff, and, or you watch off that last one, we can take any of these pinks, lights, color gray pinks here. And let's cool that just a bit. Dirty that up and cool that up a bit. And you just roll over onto that edge and you draw that edge right here so that you make sure that that rose wins up against the edge of that one, see? So that puts the rose edge. Now you can slowly work that edge a little more light until that edge does win. That edge of that rose petal wins. And since I got a real quick light dark there, let's just take a bit of that, that yellow and that undertone there and just push that in. That'll make it look like we know what we're doing. Just warm it just a touch. And see, now that edge wins. And so that's what I am a lot of times is I'm an edge painter. I'm watching those edges, watching what's coming forward. Those edges come forward. That lost edge recedes. And I'm watching how those edges are, are moving you through this painting. Now, if it stops real quick right here, then I'll just take that smaller little brush. Let's just roll right over onto the edge. Just follow your pattern if you're trying to and just, and just pull that in right there. Bring the edge of that rose up. Then just touch into a little bit of those warm colors touch in like that let's bring that edge up just a touch more that'll make it look like we know what we're doing bring that up just a bit more here like that that's kind of a pretty little thing there I like that let's drop this edge right into here now and so sometimes I do, I'll come back and concentrate on my edges a little bit and fix everything up. There are times that I don't, you know, and everybody's different, you know, and everybody has different likes and dislikes. And so they, you know, there are students of mine that like the really lost, fluffy edges, students that like more defined edges, you know, with it, everyone's different. That's the beautiful thing about what we do. Now let's just take a bit of our pine green and some burnt sienna, maybe a little red violet to cool it here. And we can do a little bit of negative painting dark, bringing those together right in here. That's going to give us just a touch more con a touch more contrast right there in the center. Maybe a touch of that. And you can shape and shape up some of your little um blossoms out here and you can add little stems and stuff like that to them little stuff going on that's all up to you here sometimes I'll do this I there like that I had one of the questions that was on it um, and and I haven't done really I got to thinking about it as I read that comment on the uh, video was if I ever do the rose thorns and I used to do a lot of them I always do it with a little bit of burnt sienna sometimes a little bit of my yellows but I love the burnt sienna thorns and it's just a little triangle and so I would use just the chisel of the brush and pull down and then just pull in just a bit and 
you can make them pointed as sharp and as deadly as you want here and stuff. But uh, yeah, I used to do a lot of the the thorns and stuff like that into into uh, roses and stuff. And it's kind of nice to to have them uh, show up sometimes on the other you know, parts of paintings and stuff. So there's some of that. We could put in some lighter, a little bit of yellow green here. It's just fun. You know, you keep it fun, you try it. So you can transfer off and, and paint it, or you can do like, see what I do is I start out emulating pretty close to what it is, and then I start letting the rose talk to me. <laughs> and yeah, it starts talking, to me, especially as you get later in the evening, it talks more. But you no, know, you just have some fun with it. And it's, you know, you can open it up. I could open, I can get rid of that petal and open it up. And both of them are okay, you know. Both of them are okay. I'm just going to put a little bit more light of the green right out there. I just like touches of colors and stuff coming out here like that. That's just kind of pretty. Now, there's this one thing that bothers me about it is that this is just so perfectly round right there. And I've been looking at that for the last few minutes and it hasn't gotten better. So I'm going to change it here. Just take a little light and pull out and uh, disrupt the edge of that a bit. Maybe even, you know, just I'll maybe bring this edge up just a bit more right here, okay? And then I'll do, sometimes if I don't like it, I'll, I'll do what I call transparent it up, reseed it up, put some of the greens and stuff right back into that there and pull a bit. Like that. Now see, it's blurred out that whole petal. It's almost gone. Now I can come back with my lights and set the edge of a petal and make it more, you know, transparent, translucent, build it up as much as I want just to give a an idea of it. I'm going to put a little cooler red in there because that's what's on that side. Pull some of that colors of those little blossoms right in there. I like that. We'll bring those together a bit there. And just let some of that transparency come there. You could, you know, just edge a little more light. So if you want to see more of the edge of the petal here, you can edge just tiny bits of light and stuff. I don't think it needs too much more than that. Maybe a, a bit more right out here like that coming out here. It's kind of neat. Here, just I like to see that movement. I, I try not to do once I get that movement, I try to just direct the in and out of it, try not to destroy too much of it, and that's what makes it uh, kind of pretty. The other thing is paint it back. Now it's it's out. Of course, you know the bottom of that one is out quite a big quite a big distance there. But if it bothers you, you can always paint some of it back out. That doesn't bother me too much. I could uh, cool. Get a nice dark green, green, violet. I didn't use any blue in this painting, but that's okay. And uh, constant and, and shape up and, and, and draw that, that uh, leaf right there a little darker. Maybe even just hit it with a little pine green and yellow. Just some edges of it. So we'll put just the movement of that little leaf there. So you see, I do like, I know it sounds crazy, but I do like the little vein lines that just, uh, just, uh, well, done a lot better than that. Just uh, put a little vein line out and it just gives a, a little subtle movement of the, of the leaf. Let's just drop one right down in here. That little bit of violet into that leaf really looks neat too. Just little edges of it. Sometimes, you know, you, you just put it on and, you know, like that little swirl of color that I put on there and got that, I kind of like that. Never be able to copy that ever again. <laughs> you know, it just wouldn't do that. But there's an idea for you, okay? So what it does, what you're basically doing is, you know, the last the last thing I painted with you guys is we did this big one right here. And you take your, your, your you know, your plastic and you lay it out on there. And that's what I would do if you're beginning to transfer some of the shapes of some of the flowers and stuff like that that you see and, and put those out 
and, and transfer those lines. But now, instead of holding to those lines perfectly, you can start, um, you know, to let, easing those edges, easing those lines, and start finding some of your own way. Now, if you're a very, very beginner, no, yeah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna come for a while, okay? If you're a very beginner, depends on how many roses. Like I always used to say, it takes 25, 50 roses. Every time you change a technique, it takes a lot of roses to make that technique part of you, okay? It takes a lot of practice. Don't ever say uh, that you can't do it. Don't ever say that because everyone can do it. But uh, it, it, don't ever say that. It's like when I started studying, I went through all the masters and I pulled out all of these principles, all these rules that they had. And one of them that hit me right to the core many, many, many years ago was uh, don't ever let anything defeat you. So don't ever approach something and say, I can't do it or I'm not or approach it in fear that you can't do it because you won't be able to do it. It's all a, psycho a psychological game that we play here as artists. And you have to get over that fear of not being able to do it. Because you can do it. It's a technique, it's practice. If you can learn how to write, if you can learn how to drive a car, you could certainly learn how to paint a rose. But it takes practice, it does. But most of that practice, at all of that starts with the, the belief that you can do it. And you can. You really can. Everyone can. I've taught, I've taught hundreds and hundreds of artists how to paint roses. Okay? And when I started, there wasn't very many that wanted to paint the roses that I started. Okay? So, you know, now people want to paint the roses. But you can see here, I didn't copy it. I just used it for a reference. I captured some of the colors and everything like that. And then started changing a whole heck of a lot. But you guys, you saw in the last one, we can, we can copy really close because that one looks just like, you know, just like the, the, when you, you know, this was the photo of the, if those of you haven't seen this yet, this was the photo of the original painting I did, um, what was it, it was like 12 years ago, and then the painting I did for you on YouTube just a bit ago. So you can... You can't copy. So that video is on there too. You should go watch that video if you haven't watched that one or watch that one again. But, uh, you know, learning to paint like this is a process and there's a lot of different processes. Now, on the channel that we're going to do here, we're discussing different ways because we want to expand the channel and uh, we want to do some things. So we're, we're discussing this. So we're going to go back um, and we wanted some of your input on this. We're going to go back to trying to get, you know, two to three videos every week. But we're going to have a, a basically a course, basically a uh, start, start painting with me right from the beginning and learning the techniques of the masters, learning the techniques of draw, you know, how to draw, how to do all of this stuff all together into this course. So we're trying to figure out how to put that all together. So you'll be seeing some stuff and I'll be asking you some questions on the community posts and everything like that in the next few weeks as, because we're going to be expanding the channel here. Okay. And so we'll be looking for some of your input. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you haven't done that, make sure that, uh, you drop us some comments and uh, I'm going to show you guys all different kinds of ways to paint everything. Okay. Because it's a lot of fun and it's all related. It's all related. Painting a portrait is just like painting a rose. It's all color. It's all related. It's all edges. It's all, it's all different rules of contrast. Okay. So thanks so much. Thanks so much everyone for joining us on the, the channel and uh, helping us make this popular. You know, the world is so much a better place with art. It really is. We got all through the COVID. You know, during the COVID, um, during when it started in 2020, we've produced since 2020 200 free videos here on YouTube to keep everybody that's locked inside, uh, you know, painting and happy and stuff. And we made it. We made. We're, we're almost through it. But uh, we're going to keep going, okay? Because it's a lot of fun. So thank you for all of you that have joined us that comment, that watch the videos, and support the channel, especially support the channel, because it costs us a lot to try to put all this together for you guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you do. So 
I'm going to show you a couple of real 30-minute lessons next, and then we're going to go right back to a landscape, and they'll be up in the next couple of days, and I'll see you guys back here. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.